Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video you're going to see me do something for the first time. I'm flying my aircraft from a new site on my own with no instructor and for me this is a really joyous flight because I'm basically bringing that culmination dream to fruition. There's no instructor, Jim's not around to give me any advice, I'm signed off solo and this is me developing my flying skills and for me this is really where my flying journey begins. In so let's leave the flight briefing room and you'll join me as I'm just about to taxi out for one of the 30 minute engine break in flights, but it was still fun. Helmets, harness done, throttle is secure and full and free, I've done that on the pre-flight. Area is clear behind, ignition is going on. Okay. Clear prop! Cool, engine started. Okay. Let's see if these tyres will roll on this grass. Looks like the wind's coming from that direction. Free take off and departure harness and how much secure. Instruments on and reset. Altimeter has been reset, yes. Fuel position for tyre, got 8 litres on board, which will give me at least 2 hours. Controls full and free. Controls are full and free. Awareness runway in use, that's the only runway I can use. Wind is from the left. Power. More than enough I can hold on my foot. And in the event of an engine failure, uh, low level will be landing straight ahead or into the field off to my left. There's nothing off to the right because it's a valley. Uh, anyhow, it'll be downwind and I'll be using the fields off to my left because they're more preferable to the ones with the with the right with the power lines. Uh, high circuit, I'll be returning to land. So, okay. <sighs> my first flight on my own. There's a lot of thrust on this engine, it's hard to keep the nose down. Well, I'm flying. Woohoo! I'm trying to find the trim point for the bar. Because all I'm doing is climbing all the time. Oh, this is magnificent. I am flying my own aircraft on my own. Post solo. What more can you ask for? The air is so smooth today. See the Bristol Channel over there? Oh, this is gorgeous. Absolutely fantastic. Feels weird having flown paramotors for so long. And although I wasn't really thinking about it in the uh, in the twin C microlight, having no cage around the propeller behind me just feels a bit kind of like you're naked. Driving without a seatbelt type thing. The Bristol Channel and I can see Minehead. Minehead's coming up on, uh, on my 12 o'clock. Fond memories of the Icarus, of having to land a Minehead for fuel. Emotional? Did I say fond? I didn't mean fond, painful. I think I was over controlling on the way out. Because I was quite nose high, which means the roll stability changes, so I've been told. 
And this is where, effectively, for me, my, my flex wing journey is now starting. I thought that aviation was fairly succinct in that the same methods and models all apply. But actually, everything I knew about conventional fixed wing aircraft does not apply here. You know, roll stability changes with angle of attack. So the more angle of attack you have, the less stable it is. The less angle of attack, the more stable it is. And I found this in my, in my uh, first solo flights, which is why Jim told me to stop climbing out so steeply. As I was climbing out, I had the steep angle of climb on, it meant I was rolling over. And so the less angle of attack means you don't roll over so easily. You lose roll stability. I have to uh, say a big thank you to um, Ben Ashman, the designer of this machine, who's also made that camera mount for me. So hopefully I can get a different angle than just from underneath the wing. Let's see how it pans out. Making sure I stay within sight of the field in case I have an engine out. It's there. So these first few flights I'm still in the engine braking zone, so I'm only doing 30 minute flights. Well, however many flights I can get in today but uh, I will be capping this one at 30 minutes. I don't want to annoy the, the farmer's local uh, inhabitants. As I've always found with paramotoring, it's so easy to lose a field and yet so hard to gain it. So for me, this is my dream, dream come true. I am flying my own aeroplane. I've come out on my own to fly one thing I have noticed with all the videos that I've been using for the uh, for the Paramotor to PB series is it's actually allowed me to go back and look at microscopic detail what I was doing and I think that's really helped me uh, self-analyze what I was doing and why and has helped me on my journey without that I think I would have taken me a lot longer to get to solo uh, on my own aircraft I've thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed the journey um, it does take me back to when I was on gliders and Cessnas and things that you've always got that person next to you that you can bounce off instantly whereas with paramotoring, unless you've got someone in the back seat with you then you're never really going to get that instantaneous debrief about the fine detail of how you're flying it does feel weird not having a pod around me but at least I've got a bar for my feet sitting comfortably one thing I'm going to miss at the minute is having a trim facility because at the minute I'm holding a very very small it's probably not obvious unless on the camera very small amount of pressure that's where the bar naturally sits as in with Jim do nothing yeah so to fly faster you pull the bar in it's like your trim is going out for a lovely day it's a bit nippy on the old face but that screen actually um, Yep, that screen takes a lot of the blast off the face. So today is also a bit nerve-wracking because it's the first time I'd have landed at this strip and it's a lot narrower than what I'm used to. I'm used to a 50 metre wide tarmac runway at Donkerswell and probably a 50 metre wide tarmac runway at uh, Avottery. This is probably barely 25 metres wide. Grass and undulates. I can't wait to go my pilot rating back and go cross country with this thing. Just fill the tank to the maximum I can carry for the sub 75 because I've got a reserve behind me. Probably can't see it. And, uh, and start clearing off and visiting places because that's really, really what I want to do with this. Right, let's start thinking about approaching and landing. So I haven't just my harness, my helmet's still secure. I do know I've got a sufficient fuel from what I took off with. I'm still looking out for traffic. There's no radio procedures and there is only one runway and the wind is coming from the left to the right. I'm going to do an overshoot just so I'm comfortable, unless it all comes in peachy, at which point I will land. But I'm planning to overshoot because I'm unfamiliar with this and I want to see what it looks like. 
I realised from previous videos I've been coming in too slow, I need to come in a little bit faster. This is a private strip, you never know who's coming in, so it's all about keeping a good lookout. A little bit nervous. Certainly dropped through there, I need to come in flatter with more power I think. I'm definitely going to aim further up, not on the crest. And we're down. Woohoo! Oh, that was certainly uh, focusing the mind. Ah. Right, T's uh, temperatures are okay. Finish the flight and the ignition off. Yes. Woo! Oh yeah. That's an amazing feeling. I so so enjoyed that. Hi everyone. I just wanted to put onto camera really my thoughts post flight, and today has been amazing. It's been the culmination of my dream. Uh, beyond the solo, today has been the solo on my own with no one around, no instructor and aviation has been committed. I've taken off, I've landed, I've flown around and achieved all that in a safe manner. And that for me is what this video series is all about. I did two go around, you probably saw in the video, and then finally worked out how to actually bring it in safely. It is an achievement to be able to fly, but I will think forever and a day, I will be trying to work out how to land this thing the right way and I just need to get dialed in. I'm loving flying the PB to show you. There's my PB. So until the next video, everybody, fly safe.